Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Ray here and today we're going to do Q&A part two. These are comment questions that I have received in the past week or so, a little bit more, and I would, I've been saving them up so that I could go ahead and share them with you all and maybe it'll answer some questions that you might have as well. So thank you all for sending in your questions. I really appreciate it. And, uh, Without further ado, Luna and I are going to answer your questions. You might not hear her answers, though, unless you speak dog. <laughs> so first comes from Roxanne Piernicki. She asks, where did you get your big tray? The big white tray that I use for diamond painting, I actually purchased from Wish.com. I don't really recommend purchasing from Wish.com, but there's a few other places that you can find them. You can find them on AliExpress. You can find them on Amazon. Some stores like uh, Star Ore sell them as well. And so you can, you can just go and search online and look for large diamond painting drill tray. And even if you Google it, you might come up with some search results. But I don't really link it anymore because it's just a part of my every day, <laughs> uh, kind of, I don't know, accessory pack that I would use for diamond painting. I don't always use it, but I do use it a lot and it's very helpful. Kim Hagen asks, what is washi tape and how do you use it? Kim, washi tape is a kind of stationary tape. It's not like scotch or sellotape. It's a lot less sticky, but it's really good to, to use around the edges of a painting. Like if you have excess glue or tape that goes over the edges, that can attract lint and dust and hair if you have pets. So I like to put washi tape around the edge if the edge goes, you know, if the sticky part goes beyond the canvas itself. But I also use washi tape when I am sectioning a clear plastic cover on a diamond painting, just so that I know where the plastic stops, like where my section stops. Otherwise, otherwise I kind of tend to, to dot or drill on the plastic and then go, oh yeah, duh. So it just helps me to see where that line is and where to stop diamond painting. Michelle Davis asked, when are we going to get a framing video? I have all of the princess princesses, I think she means diamond art club princesses, the long diamond paintings. Um, and she wants to know how to frame them. I actually just made a video and posted it there, Michelle. I don't know if you've seen it already, but I went ahead and linked it to your comment. I did frame my Pocahontas painting. It is called The Daughter of Peace. Unfortunately, that particular image is no longer available at Diamond Art Club, but it will give you an idea of how to frame other pieces that are a similar shape. I think that the wall hanging framing options are are quite limited and the the wall scroll frame type look is probably the best way to go. If it doesn't fit with your aesthetic, you could always frame it. You can find a custom frame online or if you're lucky enough to live in the US, you might be able to just walk into a store and order a custom frame. Um, but that was the way that I went with mine and I may do exactly the same thing with my aerial diamond painting as well. So thank you for asking. I would like to make mention at the moment, I won't say any names, but I have gotten quite a few comments on the Die Moon Shop June Mystery Artist Reveal video in which there is a contest, a giveaway. Uh, in order to enter the giveaway, you, you can't just leave a comment on the video. That will not enter you in. You have to follow the directions that are in the description box of the video. So in order to get to the description box, which is another thing that I think I should make mention here, is that you go into the, uh, either if you're on a computer, you scroll under the video and you'll see where I start writing something. I'll have some 
some information about what I'm working on, or um, I, you'll see that I've started to type, and then it'll say see more. You have to click where it says see more, and then it'll give you all of the information. And if you're looking at a tablet or a phone, and you're watching that way, that's okay. You just need to click on this little arrow on the right hand side. I'll go ahead and insert some pictures there so you can see. So if you need to, if you need to research, look up and uh, have a look. So here is the computer version and here is the phone version. Okay, so that is how you open up the description box. From there, you need to scroll down and read how to enter the giveaway. You have to go to a separate site and there are extra entries that you are eligible for if you wish to do the things that it says, but you cannot just leave a comment on the video that will not enter you in. I know that other creators are doing that, but that's not how I'm running mine uh, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> um, but just just so that it's fair, if you feel like you've entered, but you did not go to a separate website, then you have not entered. Please go check again. Lizzie Busy asks, where do you keep all the drills for each canvas you keep under your mattress in the plastic organizer? You got to keep them separated, but where? There are so many. Yes, uh, I keep them all separate and I have under the bed storage organizers for them. So basically when a canvas comes in and I do the unboxing, I then, if it's a double-sided tape adhesive painting, I will hold it and put it flat in a plastic A1 sized portfolio, artist portfolio, slide that in there. And then the drills get put into an under the bed container, which I have two of them that are full of drills at the moment, which is why... <laughs> which is why I'm not really buying diamond paintings anymore because I know that I could keep going and I've consolidated and I've, um, I've given away quite a few paintings as well. And <laughs> I, I know it, there are so many, I have a lot of them in my stash, but that is how I separate them. So if you're looking for a way to do it, I mean, you could use any kind of box, but I would highly recommend using something that is a like a BPA free plastic tub that can slide in somewhere, either in the closet or under the bed, and that'll keep it out of sight, but protected. So I hope that helps Lizzie. In one of my recent videos, I said that a gift was sent to me for my birthday. My birthday, <laughs> my birthday is February 22nd. So the gift has been in the mail for a long time. <laughs> uh, my, my birthday is not June 18th um, when that video aired, but rather back in February. But thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Gail Coleman says, I'm still new at diamond painting and I absolutely love, love, love it, but I'm a little concerned. So far, I've only done one and I have not encountered, encountered the oil on the drills. So with that said, have you made a video on what to do if one should encounter this issue? If you can, if you have, can you direct me on here to find it? I am actually in the process of uh, editing said video. Uh, I have gotten quite a few requests to, to show how I remove oil from the drills. So that should be up shortly, if not before you actually see this video. But I hope that it helps. It's really easy to take care of. So don't worry. Um, you're probably gonna, <laughs> you're probably gonna go, oh yeah, that's, that's quite easy. But I know that for some of us, it's much easier to, to see it done uh, as visual learners. So I have no problem helping you out with that, Gail. Not at all. Next question is from Carol Scott. Um, she says, I can't seem to get my drills to settle down and go in the rows in my tray. Uh, I shake it, but they don't seem to line up properly. Do you have any advice on how to? Thanks again, Carol. Um, Carol, the the best way that I can think of it is to explain that it's all in the wrist. You have to you have to shake them side to side, uh, and if you're using a little tray, I shake them up and down. Um, there are a few how-to videos out there, but I will do my best to show you in a little clip. Or if you just watch 
if you do watch quite a bit of YouTube, if you watch whip and chat videos or other diamond painting videos, you'll see it being done as we change colors. Uh, if you just maybe slow down the video, you'll be able to see exactly how we shake. But I would just say practice makes perfect and eventually it'll just click and it'll be much easier to do. Andrew Wilkinson asks, what is something that you miss? Let me just bring it up here. What is something that you miss from the States? Uh, I just want to get to know you a little better. Well, Andrew, um, and for those of you watching, if you don't know, I don't live in the United States. I live in Ireland. And I think that one thing I miss is probably convenience. Um, in the U.S., convenience is, is almost like a right, <laughs> I want to say. Um, if it isn't fast and uh, easily accessible and um, now, then y y it's it's not the American way. I hate, I hate saying it like that, but um, in other countries, they kind of put other things first, you know, um, and they're a lot slower. So when I first came, when I moved here, I've lived away from the U.S. for nine years, almost 10 years. Uh, so it's been quite a while, and I think I can speak as an expert on this topic now. Um, once I had moved away, I realized that um, the thing that I that I wasn't used to or that I missed the most was how quickly uh, things could get done, expedited services, etc. So uh, even when you know I was looking for a place to rent, uh, it, it took weeks and weeks and weeks. Whereas in the U S, um, there's so much competition driven economy, uh, that there are a lot of people looking for your business and they will fall all over you to get your money. Um, it's really important to realize that the world doesn't work that way <laughs> in, in other countries. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's a, an odd mindset, but anyway, Sorry, I went on a tangent there. I think I do. I do miss the convenience. Um, and I know you're probably asking me about a specific item or a food or something like that. But sometimes I just miss how quickly we can get things done and, you know, uh, money talks, so to speak. Uh, but another thing, if, if we're talking about an item <laughs> or something like that, um, I miss, I miss clothes shopping. <laughs> I find that, um, I find that going shopping in the States is a totally different kind of, hush you, it's a kind of a different, it's a day out. It's something fun to do. It's ingrained in our culture. Whereas here, um, while a lot of people here also go shopping for retail therapy and stuff like that. I can't find what I'm looking for. A lot of the times there's just not as many options. And again, like, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I grew up with. It was a part of the culture and it's, it's hard to get used to no matter where I go. It's hard to get used to the difference of that. But I do appreciate <laughs> when I do get a chance to go back to the States. I do appreciate that I know exactly where I can go. And I know it can get done in a day and I don't have to wait. And sometimes that's really fun. So I hope that answered your question. I know that was a bit long winded. But thank you for asking it, Andrew. Short Princess 03 asks, have you ever mailed a finished diamond painting? If so, how would you recommend to mail one? I went ahead and I sent you the link there, but in essence, if you wish to mail out a diamond painting, you're going to want to pack it up nice. Uh, first, you need to roll it with the drills facing outward. If you, if you roll it with the drills facing inward, they'll pop off. So you want to make sure those drills are out on the outside, roll it up and put it into an artist's tube. So if you've ever purchased from Evermoment, Evermoment ships all of their diamond paintings in a hard cylindrical cardboard tube. 
Uh, sometimes they're reinforced, sometimes not. But those are the best thing to mail a diamond painting in. You might want to put some, you know, um, those oh my goodness, foam rollers. Sorry, I forgot the word there for a second. You might want to put a foam roller in the middle, but it's not really necessary because um, the drills actually give the diamond painting structure once it's finished. So I would recommend sending it like that. Um, make sure that the ends are really well taped. You'd want to, you know, wrap the tube in some paper, maybe in some plastic. Whenever I send a diamond painting and mail a diamond painting from my home to someone else, whether they want to give away or if I'm just giving it away, um, I always wrap it in cling film. I think I'm trying to remember what we call it in America. Saran wrap. I think it's like a brand. We, why do we call things by their brand names? Anyway, um, so you'd want to you'd want to go and use the plastic film, you know, and cover it up and then tape it up nice and good. Um, that will keep any water out, any moisture out that might happen from carrying it in a rainy climate or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I think that's the safest way to mail a diamond painting. So good luck. Good luck to you. Victoria McCoomey asks, um, she, oh, sorry, she says, I love how you spray painted the sides. Was it duct tape that you used to tape the brown paper? Uh, this is on my framing the doll tall diamond painting, my Pocahontas painting. And thank you all for all of your kind comments. I really appreciate it. Um, duct tape. No, it wasn't duct tape that I used to put down that paper. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I think that duct tape might be a little too strong though. Like it might try to pull up the drills if you use duct tape. I used what's called tractor tape or um, it's a thick electrical tape. You could use whatever you want. You can use whatever you like. Um, I just wanted something that was going to hide the drills so that they didn't get spray painted. But in the end, they got spray painted anyway. Excuse me, if you were going to do this yourself, I would recommend if you have an outdoor space to spray paint, take the diamond painting to the outdoor space. Excuse me. Take the diamond painting to the outdoor space first, then put on the tape and the paper. Uh, by me moving that, <laughs> it just went all over the place. And um, I had spray painted quite a bit of the drills. So I actually had to rip off the drills and replace them because they were spray painted brown. So I would highly recommend that you just uh, put it where you want to spray paint it first and then cover it up. Um, it didn't remove any drills. That black tape I used, the electrical type tape, they call it tractor tape. I'm sure that it's used to do something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a farmer, but, uh, but yeah, that's how I did it. And, uh, and I'm glad that you all really like it. It was so much fun to finally finish it. On my video called How I Frame and Seal a Diamond Painting and Quick Post Review, Joy Melicharova asks, um, I want to know if it's necessary to put sealant when you put it in a frame, because it's quite scary to put something liquid in the piece. It isn't necessary to seal diamond paintings if you're putting them behind glass. Not necessarily. The reason that I sealed that particular diamond painting, one, is because the drills were popping off. Uh, two, because I had been asked <laughs> to seal a diamond painting, even though I, I rarely, if ever, seal any diamond painting. The adhesive is enough to keep those drills on for a long time. Remember that these diamond paintings, they take a very long time for us to complete in the first place, unless you're super speedy about it, but they might not hang on your wall for more than 10 years. At least in my home, I don't think they will. I plan on changing them out. Um, if, but that's beside the point. The point is, is that no, you really don't have to seal them, especially if you put them behind glass. But even if you don't, as long as you put something heavy on top of it for quite a while, those drills are going to set into either whatever adhesive it is, if it's a tape or if it's a glue, they're going to adhere to that and they're going to stay. 
there are, there's a big debate on, you know, which adhesives are best. But personally, if the drills are popping and I'm not putting it in a frame, then I would seal it with the Tombow Aqua Glue. There are many other types of sealants out there and I will not be doing them because in Ireland, it's quite expensive for me to get all the different sealants, but there are quite a few good videos out there. Please have a YouTube search if you're looking for the one that's right for you. I do remember there are several, uh, several kind of tester videos, uh, experimental videos on which look best on a diamond painting. So head on over to the search function and check it out because you'll definitely see some really interesting results. On the Frame a Tall DP where I framed my Pocahontas painting, Holly Cole said um, she was asking, did the key, the legend, get covered fully with one coat? I don't remember exactly if I did one or two coats. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly, but if if the spray paint that you're using doesn't fully cover the, the key in one coat, it's perfectly fine to go back after it's dried and put on another coat. I made sure that it was a very sunshiny day and that the um, <laughs> that the, the paint would dry quite fast. I believe the brand that I was using dried in about 10 or 15 minutes, but I left it for an hour. So uh, definitely check with whatever can that you're using because it will be different from mine, most likely uh, for any of you listening. Um, just make sure you follow the directions on the tin and when in doubt, just leave it longer. <laughs> I do get a lot of comments about where can I find a diamond painting for a good price. Um, I just want to address it here that my own personal stance on this is that I only purchase diamond paintings from stores that legally license their images or use copyright free images in order to sell diamond paintings because it is a moral issue and I have evolved and grown since starting my channel. I know many, many amazing artists now and I want them to get credit and money for the work that they do. So it's really important to me to only buy from companies that I know for sure are making sure that those images they have are licensed. So when someone asks me for my recommendations to find it a good diamond painting for a sensible price, I'm always going to link you to my top 10 recommended, recommended diamond painting stores. I have a video on that. You can check it out. Um, if you've already seen it before, but you're confused, just you can click on it and look in the description. I have all of the links there and you can do your own research but I personally coming from the position that I am in here I can't recommend any other store at the moment uh, until I know for sure that they also license their diamond paintings so if there are other companies that I can add to that list in the future I will definitely let you know but for now all of those companies are listed in that video I'm not sure if Gracie is watching, but Gracie asked me on my floss tube video that she says she loves Mrs. Sadis floss and she's waiting for her order, but wanted to know how I organized or cut it. Essentially, the, the floss comes in a hank. You untwist the hank and then find a position on it to cut. So I cut through the entire hank, uh, straight through. And then I sectioned it out into pieces, probably, you know how there's six strands on one piece of thread, right? Or one, six threads in one strand. It's hard to explain, but you know what I mean. Just like DMC floss. Anyway, I separated the, those into like maybe uh, sections of 15 or 20. And then I wound them around a hanger like you would a thread card. So I used my hanger as a thread card and looped them around the hanger so that they're safe, they're hanging, they're not 
getting crumpled or wrinkled and they're hanging up in my closet. So that's how I organized it. There was a fantastic video by Caroline at Off the Grid Needle Arts if you want to check out how she did it. I attempted to wind my floss, my hank, into a ball, but it didn't work. <laughs> so I'm going to try with the other one as well, but we'll see. But I think that the hanger is probably the best way to go, though. Trisha Leatherman was commenting on my video unboxing the floatingstyles.com Chinese temple diamond painting. I don't know if you remember this, but I was sent a canvas to review from the company Floating Styles. They sent me a very large diamond painting, uh, but not the largest one that they had for that particular style. And she was wondering, Trisha was wondering what the company's response was to my questions. I actually went back in my email because I didn't remember and I remember telling this, I, I just read the email again, and I told them that in this particular canvas that they sent me, they only sent 30 colors with it, and I thought it wouldn't be enough for a painting of that size. Does the next size have more colors? Um, I usually expect 40 to 50 colors for a painting bigger than a 40 by 50, um, especially with small details, because the more details there is, the more confetti or color change is needed to bring out the objects in the painting. And, uh, and I told her that, um, I, I thought that it would be, it would be nice to know and to share that information with you all. Um, and then I talked about uh, licensing artists and, uh, not violating copyright laws, um, hoping that they can accept constructive criticism and also that they sent square drills and not round drills and that there are issues with the drills. Um, that was November 18th of 2019 that I sent those emails and I've never received a response. So I didn't really expect to get a response. I think they just wanted to use me as an advertisement, but, um, just a little tidbit there for you that sometimes even when even when we are sent something to review the company isn't necessarily looking for our feedback on it rebecca g M me stargazer sorry excuse me i couldn't really read that very well i apologize uh rebecca asked in the diamondpaintings.co.uk diamond painting unboxing video I get the difference in double-sided adhesive versus poured glue, but what is mounting adhesive? I went ahead and I went on to the Treasure Studios Art website because they explain it very well. It says here, we use professional, strong, industrial strength adhesive on our canvases. Now this is Treasure Studios Art and not from diamondpaintings.co.uk, so just bear that in mind. Uh, we use professional, strong, industrial strength adhesive on our canvases with a clear protective film over the adhesive. The adhesive we used is called mounting adhesive film. This adhesive is one of the world's strongest industrial adhering materials. Our adhesive is waterproof and has a high heat resistance. It is used for many industrial applications, such as attaching large indoor and outdoor signs to surfaces, such as glass and walls. In addition, it's used to help preserve museum museum artworks and family photographs as it is as it is acid free meaning it will not yellow or eat away the canvas or deteriorate it boasts long lasting adhesion to almost any surface including electronic parts and devices and motor vehicles so i went ahead and i looked on youtube and i was able to research some videos and it looks like it's used a lot in lamination as well so Basically, it's a strong film adhesive, but it works and is applied in the same way or a similar way as the double-sided tape. I hope that helps. I know that uh, it is a little confusing, but there are differences in all three. Meredith J5 asked, it's been a year since, it's been over a year 
since this video, the diamond painting ruler video and demonstration was posted. Do you still use this ruler on your diamond paintings? I'm not sure if I should get one or not. I have read mixed reviews about it. Truthfully, no, I've never used that ruler ever since that video. It has stayed in the drawer and I've never touched it again. I think it's pretty useless in fairness for me because I don't find it difficult to place diamonds straight. But I do get a lot of comments asking me how I line up my drills straight. So if you're having issues doing so, then a ruler probably would be a good investment for you. But for me personally, no, I don't use it. I've never touched it again. I'm so sorry, Meredith, uh, but I'm in camp no ruler. Simply Me asked, do you take the wax out of your pen after a session? I'm sorry, I'm an absolute beginner. I don't know what to do. It's perfectly fine. No, I don't take the wax out of my pen. Uh, sometime, not, not after a session. If it becomes unsticky, then I will take out any wax that's in there and refill the pen. But I don't end the diamond painting session by cleaning out the pen. No. And that's everything, folks. Thank you so much for sharing all of your comments with me. I really enjoy answering your questions and I hope it helps you. If you have any future questions, be sure to leave them down in the comment section of whatever video you might be watching, whether it's this one or another one, and I will do my best to get back to you and answer you or direct you to a video in which I've made that answers the question. So. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care, guys. Take care, guys. Bye.